All right. Hey, everybody. How you doing? So, I had, uh, I'm having to do this again because I was making a recording earlier uh, that went about an hour and a half, and I found out that I had deselected one of the, the, the buttons for the microphone. So I spoke for an hour and a half and didn't catch any audio. So here I am doing this again. Um, non-scripted, just me and my complaints. So what are we talking about today? I've got quite a bit of news on Iran and Israel. Of course, we know over the weekend that Iran attacked Israel in an unprecedented aerial bombardment. Of course, while we're out on training, um, as usual, we get attacked. It's interesting that over a year, uh, the Vindictive Solutions team has been training people. We've trained over 80 people now. Um, every single time we've had a training event, something around the world majorly has happened. It's incredible. We had an awesome time this weekend uh, with the the guys who showed it up. Uh, it was a awesome team of guys. We, uh, we got to do a lot of fellowship. Um, got to lift each other up. Got to preach to each other, teach to each other, inspire one another. It was truly a great time in the Lord. If you are hungering for brotherhood and fellowship, while also needing training, our training is a, it's a pretty good place to be. Next weekend, this upcoming weekend, we're traveling to Corpus Christi. We're training our first uh, church group. We've got almost 20 people there for this training, so it's going to be a lot of work, um, but it'll be a fun time. You know, originally... When I had started this, one of the reasons why um, I'm so passionate about teaching people how to protect themselves, uh, we were originally reaching out to church groups, uh, church security teams, anyone who'd show up to help protect the flock. And um, it starts with my wife's church back in Colmas Neal, Texas, where we're from. Um. We had a double homicide on the steps of the church. My wife's grandmother was present for it. It was a um, an ambush, a bushwhack. There was a man and his fiance with his daughter was waiting on the ex-wife, and they were going to do a joint custody visitation and my uh my wife's grandmother such a sweet old woman she was there to uh to oversee it well the ex-wife her brother and her sister and the mother and father i believe um they all attacked this family uh, from across the road shot at them with hunting rifles struck them, didn't kill them, and then approached the, my wife can probably correct me, you can find this uh, on the internet, the the case. It's actually in our active shooter uh, PowerPoint demonstration that we give to churches, should anyone ever want it, um, but um, executed both the father and the uh, fiance with a shotgun at point blank range, blood was everywhere. So after that uh, double murder, I felt it necessary to start down this path of training people. And um, I've trained two churches. Um, it's strange how individuals will come and get training. And then, you know, we ask churches like, hey, do you have anyone trained for the sanctuary? Any training at all? Most people say no, but they got people that are armed in there. And that's a good thing. 
But the realism is, do you know how to actually deal with people? Have you ever actually had to deal with people with a gun out? Have you ever had to think with a gun out while talking to people during a austere environment? The answer is 99% of most people is a no. So we do our best to try to train people. We have always said that churches are the first place that needs to get trained. Next is the homeowners. So most people who see us are homeowners. Um, married couples. We're starting to get a lot younger crowd now. Praise God. Uh, one of the things that I was charged with uh, by the Lord when I went down this path of getting out of the government and uh, preaching to his people, is still a surprise to me, was to reach out to the young men. And we're starting to get more young men involved. And we need young men in this in this country involved, especially in the church especially in our politics. They need to know what's going on. They need to know how to handle themselves better than just a dang video game. And so, you know, we're starting to get them. Like I said, we had a, we had an awesome group of guys this last time. Uh, it was burning hot in the Texas heat. We were all sunburnt. But um, we got some good training in. So, I wanted to talk to you about what happened at the Hear the Watchman conference. Why I'm very upset about it. Why I haven't came online and done anything since I've come back. I will say it's mainly because I'm disgusted by what happened. Myself, Jamie Walden, a few other brothers that were there. We bared witness to one of the things that we always try to warn the flock about, uh, the wolf in sheep's clothing. <clears throat> and to be honest with you, it's actually a disgrace to the wolf to even compare this guy to it. This guy was a snake, a snake behind the pulpit. Just a... CYA, I'm not going to use the guy's name or his affiliation or anything like that. But if you were there, if you were there at that conference, at the Hear the Watchman conference, and you got to meet me and uh, Damus, two thirds of the Vindictive Solutions team, uh, then it was a pleasure meeting you. Hope to see you again. Uh, for those of us that were able to uh, minister to you and uh, pray over you or just hear your story, just meet you and shake your hand. And, you know, I'm quite honored. Uh, funny story, actually. <sighs> My allergies are killing me right now. So, but um, funny story is that when uh, Damus and I got there, we had to go and fill out, you know, the the speaker card or whatever. Let them know that we're there. And uh, found out that uh, on Saturday, we were having a speaker's dinner. And at the speaker's dinner, people were able to, uh, that were there to see the conference, were able to sit down with us and chat with us. Which was super awesome. I don't know if people paid extra for that. God, I hope not. Um, but the people that we met were super cool, met a, a bunch of people here within the local area, which was awesome. Um, speaking of that, before I even forget, don't put all your, your eggs in one basket, but we do plan on doing something as like a meetup with people here in this area, most likely at the Mineral Wells State Park, but just to be determined right now it may be best to wait till fall because it's it's about to become inferno season out here in texas but um we we will be doing our own meet and greet so just uh be waiting for that but so here we are we're, we're meeting everybody um having a great time you know getting in getting to know some new people and then there's this guy that's there I'm just going to get straight into it. 
So from the very beginning, I'll have to back up. From the very beginning, uh, when me and Damus got there, we had the speakers dinner Thursday night. Uh, got to meet a bunch of the other speakers. Always awesome to see people again. And um, one of the speakers that was there you know, showed his uh, adolescence by making fun of Casper uh, McLeod, Pastor Casper McLeod. Um, which, if you've never met Pastor Casper McLeod, he is uh, honestly one of the coolest guys. Uh, he is like a 1980s British rock star throwback, extremely intelligent guy, um, awesome guy. But man, um, to make fun of that guy in front of other people. I don't know. That's, that's, that's not something that I don't think most of us normal men do. Um, so the first, first day, first minute of walking into the conference. Now this guy met me the night prior. I didn't really like him even upon meeting him. Um, that's the discernment. The Holy spirit was telling me to watch out within one minute. And Damus can back me up on this. The guy walks straight up to me and says, uh, Doug Thornton. And I was just answered. Yeah. Marine Corps. Homeland security, blah, 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 blah. Contractor overseas did bodyguard work for a bunch of rich, famous people. Yes, that's me. Said, uh, how'd you like to join me in Israel for $20,000 a month? It took me about a half a second to say no. I told the guy no. And he looked at me like if, you know, I'm, I'm a, I don't know, like a thoroughbred that he's betting on. Uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm not your guy. You're going to Israel for whatever reason that you're going there. Um, why don't you go hire an Israeli? I can't even carry a gun in Israel. So, you know, he said, no, we need. I need warrior men who know revelation. Like <laughs> just the whole time I'm like, here we freaking go. And uh, it just rubbed me wrong. Really infuriated me. And I'll tell you why. I guess with my past and the things that I've done, I've, and my wife can, can tell you this for a fact. For over a decade now, I've always been approached by extraordinarily rich people to protect them. And they almost always want to pay you peanuts to protect them and to jump in front of a bullet for them. I happen to think that my life is worth a little bit more than most of the time the money that they want to offer. And I just told them, like, look, man, I already did that, you know. Almost 14 years ago when I was doing contracting, I was, it was 20 grand a month. So and 20 grand a month, 14 years ago is not 20 grand a month. Now, not to mention there's an active war going on in Israel. We're in a presidential election. We're a heartbeat away from tyranny in America. And you want me to leave my family? to go with you on some cockamamie mission so that you can enrich yourself because it was for drilling for oil. Like God had given him a vision of drilling for oil and, and becoming rich in his quote ministry, which he's, he's one of those prosperity people. So, so into his ministry, invest in him and then you know, you're investing into the kingdom of God, and then uh, eventually they'll pray for the money to come out of heaven and back down upon you. Some something gross like that. I mean, this is this is not Christian. This is charlatan. These are the type of people that we have new people to the faith. And then we have people who are, you know, they're just exploring the faith. 
And you get a snake like this to come and talk to them, this used car salesman in a $3,000 suit with shiny shoes. It's rubbed me wrong ever since then. I've been extraordinarily upset about it. I'm actually glad that nothing got recorded from earlier today because I did not speak godly earlier today. So I'm glad I at least got that all out. But the guy really pissed me off. And I wanted to rip his mustache off his face. There's a bunch of things that was said around a bunch of people that were there. I'm not going to mention anyone else's name. But me and another brother were standing in front of, of uh, Snake, is what I'll call his name, Snake. And he said, you know why? I, I want to tell you something. He said, you know, the Lord has blessed me so much. I was able to buy just a few years ago my favorite dream car. And I'm not going to use his name, so I'll just say Snake. And he said, the Lord told me, Snake, you've been so good to me. That's why I got you that car. Now, I'm not a millionaire, and I don't walk around in multiple thousand dollar suits. I don't own suits. Um, this is about one of the nicest shirts I have. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that my idea of a dream car is different from his. Like my idea of a dream car is a four door F three fifty diesel. Uh, that's a flatbed with four wheel drive that works. That's a dream car. That's my Ferrari. Right now, my 24-year-old excursion, um, I, I guess we don't like each other, apparently, or it doesn't like to be driven very well. So, you know, after the, the speaker's lunch, all the speakers got corralled because here the watchmen, the people who put it on, uh, went into the hole. They went into debt by putting it on. And uh, Mr. Snake, Mr. Snake <laughs> called us all together like if he's in charge or, or something and said, you know, we're going to ask for donations from the people that try and help get the people who put here the watchman on out of the hole. And so part of me was like, Okay, we'll see how this goes. I immediately didn't like it. I didn't like where the, that it it became this big spectacle. Um, and the prayer that he prayed was just there was there was nothing in it. Of course, he's an empty suit, and his prayers are just as empty. And so, right after the the speaker's lunch, I have to go on and speak. Which, if you heard my last two uh, videos that I put on YouTube, then you've heard my speech. And I do ask if uh, if you want some motivation, please go and listen to uh, The Power of the Name of Jesus, which is what we should be talking about more than this right now. But I, I feel that it is imperative to warn you of people that I'm about to describe to you. So I go and do my little, my little spiel. Lord got a hold of me. And what do you think happened guys? I yelled at everybody. So, um, hopefully somebody repented. That was all I was focused on. I was focused on witnessing the people, giving my testimony, um, calling the men out like I always do. So after I'm done, they uh, they come out, Snake and his team come out and... Uh, we start to do the uh, the offerings, 
donational offerings. And all the speakers got called up to go stand on stage and, uh, and, and pray about, you know, I don't know, I guess reaching out to the Lord and hope that he could send money their way. Just the whole way that the entire thing was done was wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the, the people that hear the watchman put envelopes down, not, not discreetly. And it says, you know, if you want to donate, then please put it in here and go to the back. Instead, what Snake decided to do was to put some baskets up in front of everybody and to have this donational ceremony where he browbeat every single person. I sat there like I was so embarrassed. I left the stage. Um, me and Dave Hodges, we stood way off on the other side. Uh, I, I didn't even want to be within like sight of the TV cameras because it's it's all going on on TV. And here I am, and I'm just like, I, I don't want to be here. I mean, I think a lot of people who met me uh, probably heard me say that. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here at all. And so the spirit was right. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to see what I was about to see. And I saw Mr. Snake literally make eye contact with every single person sitting in a chair and browbeat them. Now, these are just average people like you and me, average people, probably living paycheck to paycheck. You know, wanting to, to come there for fellowship, uh, to, to feel the spirit of the Lord. And that's not what happened. And it makes me upset. Jamie Walden got so upset about it, uh, he stormed out. We're going to come on together and we're going to talk about it. I'm guessing it'll probably be, if we're not going to do it tomorrow, because today's Tuesday, we don't do it tomorrow, then we'll end up having to do it next week when we come back from uh, this next training event. But he got so mad, he stormed out. I stormed out first, then Jamie stormed out. I was so upset that nobody was calling this guy out for what he was doing. I refused to shake his hand anymore. I refused to even freaking look at him. I, I was, um, I told some of the guys that I was with, I was like, I need to, I need to leave. I got to duck out. I'm going to put my hands on this guy and rip him out of that suit. And so I just, that third day I left, I left the conference. I went and stayed upstairs. Um, which that's when I got to meet um, some of the other guys that, that were at the conference that actually came out to the training, which was such a blessing to be able to separate ourselves from that madness. Um, here's, where, here's where it gets disgusting. Where it gets disgusting is that we raised $12,000 out of the people, the 80 people who showed up we raised $12,000. I don't know what we raised online, but I know we raised $12,000. So Mr. Snake stood there in front of all of us other speakers. And this is when I, this is when I, uh, I about lost my nerve. And uh, if you know me, you probably know that occasionally I can be a bit of a hothead especially in front of people who take advantage of the flock. And so this guy says, you know, when we do our crusades and we did one month, we did five crusades, five crusades. Okay. That's what he called them a crusade. Our ideas of crusading are a little bit differently. He's out for money. I'm out for blood. This guy, this freaking guy, it's $300 to go to one of his events. Now, I don't know if they're multiple day events, but it's $300 to go to his event. So let's do some, let's do some math. Okay. He said, typically gets two to 300 people that show up to his events or more. So I'm going to say there's typically I, I, I do 200 people, but let's just say on the high side, 300 people show up. So 300 people times $300. So to add to that, 
you had to fast for three days before you came to their event. And the way he said it, he looked down his nose, down his little spectacles, and said, you got to fast for three days before you come to my event. Make sure you really want to be there. Like if we're all here to see the great snake and not the spirit of God. So for one event, for 300 people to show up for his event, he makes $90,000 for one event, okay? Now, he said he did five events, all right? So 90,000 times five equals $450,000 in one month. To top it off, when you go to his event, you can have your own personal prophecy prayed and prophesied over you. It's called divination, sorcery. For a little extra money, you can have your own prophecy. And for a little extra money, you can have your own prophecy videotaped. And by a little extra money, I mean an extra couple hundred dollars. Now, while we did this donational call Saturday night, he told me and the other speakers that he does multiple donation calls throughout the day at his events. And every time he does it, he will easily double what they that what we got that Saturday night. So if he's getting if we got twelve thousand dollars that night, which I mean, you talk about brow beating people and trying to squeeze blood out of stones in front of these people. Then he makes twenty four thousand dollars a night from his braggadocious statement, and I mean it was braggadocious. Twenty four thousand dollars a night. So let's remember the the number four hundred and fifty thousand. So twenty four thousand times five equals 120,000 plus 450,000. In one month, he claims to have made $570,000. And he's standing there in front of everybody trying to browbeat you and intimidate you to get money from you that he could have wrote a freaking check for, walked up to me and said, Doug, how'd you like to make $20,000 a month? Like if I would be applying for minimal wage. When we say you need to be careful of wolves in sheep's clothing, it's an insult to the wolf. This man is a snake. And just like every snake, a heel is going to crush his head one day. We should be praying for this man. For his false prophet wife who prophesies prophecies that go to this man in his money-making scheme. This is like a bad movie. It's a bad movie, and he's been around since the 80s. There's a lot of stuff about this guy. There are websites devoted to this guy, exposing him, and he got somehow or another invited to hear the Watchmen to be the main speaker. And everything he said had nothing to do with the glory of God, had nothing to do for calling sinners to repent, had nothing to do with reminding Christians to pick up your cross and to carry it after Christ, had nothing to do with calling men back to being the warrior priest. It had to do with him making money and invest in me. God, we need your help. We are so divided. The church itself is literally infested at this point with false teachers, false teachers, false preachers. I get called a preacher. I get called a pastor. I get called all kinds of things. Just don't call me late for dinner. (laughs) But it is so much worse for you to proclaim yourself to be a teacher and a minister 
and to lie to people, to take advantage of people. Because everything that we say will be measured even more against us for the things that we say and that we don't say, for the things that we do and that we don't do, to include calling each other out, judging one another. Should you not judge harsher amongst each other? Yes, we should. That's what the Bible says. Iron did not sharpen iron that weekend. And it, it wounds my spirit. I'll tell you why. Because, and this is just, this is just Doug's testimony. Just my opinion. But I was bought for a price. I was bought for a price by my Lord. I was the chiefest of sinners. I was a pagan. I was a liar. I was an adulterer. I was a drunkard. I wouldn't allow my wife to pray in front of me. I wouldn't allow my wife to have a Bible, though she hid it, though she prayed for me. I wouldn't let the name of Jesus be spoken in front of me, though my wife, because of the mercy God showed her, showed mercy towards me, because of the love God showed her, showed her un dying love towards me and saved me because of it. I was bought at a price that I never deserved. I think of all the times overseas, back home, all the crap I've been into, all the dangerous places I've been to, how many times I probably could have died. And yet here I am when I've had friends blown into to freaking pieces, shot, killed, commit suicide. Wives left them, become drunkards, become abusive, can never dig themselves out of the hole that they got into. And I was as, just like them heading down the same path. And then our Lord stepped in from our battles, as he always does. He stepped into the battle space that I was in spiritually, and he came himself for me. The Lord himself came for me. When you read that scripture that the Lord says that he knew you and called you his. When he says that he's jealous for you. As a father, I understand that jealousy. the things I would do for my family, the horrible things that I would do for my family. I would pour out every bit of my, my life essence for my family, but I would never give up my son for any of you. No one would. Nobody would donate their own child to the cross to what was considered to be the most excruciating way to die. Our Lord did that for us. So, for all my mistakes, for all the times that Satan said that I was forsaken, for all the times he told me that I, I wasn't deserving of redemption. Drink a little bit more, you'll be all right. For all the times that I was lied to in here, and it manifested physically in my life. When the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, it does manifest physically. That's what sin is. 
That is what sin is. Sin is death. It's not just the death of your life. It's the death of your relationships. It's the death of your ambitions. It's the death of your goals. It's the death of your peace, your sound mind, your strength, your honor, your courage, your commitment, your valor. Sin is the death of it all. And that's all Satan wants you to do is just keep on sinning. How many times has, have you felt it? The little voice in the back of your head after a night of sinning. Don't worry about repenting. You can do that tomorrow. Many people the night they heard that didn't get it tomorrow. They got a meeting with the master the next day. The prudent sees danger and hides himself. But the simple go on and they suffer for it. People who do not read this book, who do not read their Bible, they will fall victim to the snakes. I was so torn up inside earlier. I was so torn up inside about everything that happened at the Hear the Watchman conference. I should have stormed the stage. So many things I say I should have done and I didn't do it. Maybe there's a reason why I didn't do it. But I just know the Lord said, just get out of there. I told everyone who was around me what I was thinking. But the Lord told me to get out of there. Me and Jamie talked about it, you know. Yeah, we, we both wanted to do something about it. We both wanted to confront him. But the Lord will have vengeance. And I'll tell you the same thing that Jesus told those Pharisees and the people who asked about him and the wickedness of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He said, don't you worry about them. Just like Mr. Snake that we're talking about. Because he will have his due reward. If he does not repent and change his ways. That man is going to face judgment. And he will be found unrighteous for it. You don't play games with God. While there are people that are out there who are needing to be ministered to. Who are hurting. And you're going to sit there. And pray upon them. Lord have mercy. If you'd like, please open your Bibles and turn it to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. When a land transgresses, it has many rulers, but with a man of understanding and knowledge, its stability will long continue. A poor man who oppresses the poor is a beating rain that leaves no food. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but those who keep the law strive against them. Evil men do not un understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand it completely. Better is a man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. The one who keeps the law is a son with understanding, but a companion of gluttons shames his father. Whoever multiplies his wealth by interest and profit gathers it for him who is generous to the poor. If one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. 
Whoever misleads the upright into an evil way will fall into his own pit, but the blameless will have a goodly inheritance. A rich man is wise in his own eyes, but a poor man who has understanding will find him out. We found you out, Mr. Snake. When the righteous triumph, there is great glory. But when the wicked rise, people hide themselves. Whoever conceals his transgressions is not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. I don't witness to you and give you my testimony about what I used to be to glorify myself. If I do anything to boast, I boast of the Lord and his mercy shown towards me. I do it as an example, as a man of how we're supposed to be to show the other men. That's why I speak the way I do and I speak of the things that I do. Verse 14. Blessed is the one who fears the Lord always, but whoever hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Like a roaring lion or a charging bear is a wicked ruler over a poor people. A ruler who lacks understanding is a cruel oppressor, but he who hates unjust gain will prolong his days. If one is burdened with the blood of another, he will be a fugitive until death. Let no one help him. Does your pastor read this to you in church? Whoever walks in integrity will be delivered, but he who is crooked in his ways will suddenly fall. Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. A lot of people complain about Mr. Snake and his little investment scheme, about how they have lost all of their money. Some people, thousands and thousands of dollars that they'll never see back because it was a Ponzi scheme that you fell for. A faithful man will abound with blessings, but whoever hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. To show partiality is not good, but for a piece of bread, a man will do wrong. A stingy man hastens after wealth and does not know the poverty will come upon him. Whoever rebukes a man will afterward find more favor than he who flatters with his tongue. Whoever robs his father or his mother and says that is no transgression is a companion to a man who destroys what happened at here the watchman was robbery. A greedy man stirs up strife, but the one who trusts in the Lord will be enriched. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. Whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. When the wicked rise, people hide themselves, but when they perish, the righteous increase. To the man that I continue to call a snake. Lord help you. And all the people around you. That you have fooled. Brothers and sisters of God. Of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do not be fooled by these people. You know, what's sad is that the more the crisis arises in America and throughout the world, you're going to see more of these charlatans. Don't be yoked up with them. So, while we got a little bit of time, I want to read you some things that have happened recently. Israel is now standing alone against multifaceted threats thanks to the Biden administration. 
Israel is currently facing a multi-front war for its survival with Qatar, Iran, and Iran's proxies, which are encircling Israel, leading the charge. The gravity of this aggression cannot be overstated, not just for the existence of Israel, but also for the United States, Europe, and the West. Israel's struggle for survival is not solely a regional conflict. It is a battle between civilizations and those who think international law, human rights, and the rules of war are a Western joke. Since the founding of the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979, its rulers have been calling for death to America. Now, just recently in Dearborn, Michigan, and also throughout California, there have been chants of death to Israel and death to America from Americans. The Biden administration, from what we know thus far, spoke with members of Tehran, of their government, and okayed the strike against Israel. And now apparently has done the same thing with Israel and is telling Israel to strike Iran and then called Iran and told them to allow Iran to be struck by Israel to save face. Left-wing activists in Chicago have been filmed chanting death to Israel and death to America. An Iranian military security official has revealed exclusively that the United States contacted the Islamic Republic, this is from thecradle.com, asking the nation to allow Israel a symbolic strike to save face following Iran's retaliatory drone and missile barrage this weekend. Quote, Iran has received messages from mediators to, the le to let the regime do a symbolic strike to save face and asked Iran not to retaliate. He added that Tehran outright rejected the proposal delivered by the mediators, and reiterated warnings that any Israeli attack on Iranian soil would be met with a decisive and immediate response. The reply was delivered directly to the Swiss envoy in Tehran by officials from the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and not the foreign ministry. According to the cradle sources, the decision for the IRGC to reply directly was meant to send a strong warning to the United States. Iran successfully embarrassed all of the integrated radar network and anti-missile systems of the United States and the Israeli regime. The United States even activated its parked satellites over the region to do maximum protection and failed miserably, says the Iranian military official. The revelations come as a U.S. defense official has told Western media that they expected a limited response from Israel against Iran, which will reportedly focus on targets outside of Iranian territory. The United States does not intend to take part in the military response. However, they expect Israel to inform Washington about the response plans in advance. Forty-six activists have been arrested in a blockade at SeaTac Airport in Washington State, targeting the Seattle light rail during a shut it down for Gaza protests. These protests are now popping up all over the United States and are mainly targeting ingress and egress for, and this is this is even crazier. Um, they're targeting this for places where we have shipping to go back and forth. Now I'm going to read you something from the Ford Observer. 
And this all was planned for A15. That was the operation by Antifa, who led it. Um, this is from yesterday. Today's A15, April 15th protests were actually a reprise of the 2020 era far left revolutionary organizing. There will be protests and probably some limited disruption. But what if I told you that the truth is far more insidious and you should really listen to what these guys are about to say, which, by the way, I'm not sponsored by Ford Observer, um, but they are about as on top of getting instant intelligence out to people as it could be. I mean, they are better than what we have in the Fed. Absolutely better. Um, so they, they put a lot of our agencies to shame with their intelligence gathering. <laughs> $10 a month, Ford Observer, strong suggestion. So the A15 day of action, pro-Palestinian activists are expected to block U.S. economic choke points, such as ports and key traffic interceptions, as part of the April 15th A15 day of action. Ports in Long Beach, Los Angeles, Oakland, Houston, Philadelphia, and other key economic infrastructure are possible targets for protests and other forms of direct action which typically means rioting. According to their statement, activists intend to disrupt and blockade economic logistical hubs and the flow of capital to urge governments around the world to support Palestine. That's what we're being told anyways. But this is actually a reprise of efforts from Antifa and the far-left revolutionary class that we saw in 2020. These activists and militants were making plans to oust then-President Donald Trump if he stayed in office. Their plan was to effectively shut down the United States economy to force then-President Donald Trump out of the White House. Activists publicly stated that they would keep the economy disrupted until Trump caved to public pressure and resigned. That was their plan and probably still is. There's actually a photograph of the United States, and this was captured um, in the far left's circulating pamphlet. So, starting in January 2020, far-left militants began circulating a pamphlet called Choke Points in a Fragile Network. Quoting directly from the document, it says, This pamphlet shows the transportation network that corporations use to move goods into the United States from around the world. The veins of this network reveal where workers have power, the shipping lanes, ports, highways, and rail lines that connect U.S. cities and towns. Here's what's crazy, and you need to understand this. Antifa is a unconventional terror group. They're a very well-known domestic terror group that is an extremely large extremely hostile, extremely dangerous organization that the government has gone completely hands-off with. They have, in their means, the capability of shutting down the United States infrastructure. And they have the ability to do it. They have practiced doing it. Expect this to happen in the future. Mass mobilizations aren't something that you just cold start in November. So when these elections start up and just randomly out of nowhere, you start to see things shutting down, things on fire, riots spontaneously happening, roads being destroyed, railroads being destroyed, rail, uh, trains under attack, ships under attack. They've told you that they were going to do it. So in Chicago this weekend, there was at least 43 people shot and seven killed just this weekend across the city. Business as usual. On the U.S. border, a United States soldier has shot a migrant during a border crossing stabbing near El Paso, Texas, as rising violence is now continuing. And Europe 
France and Germany urge its citizens to depart Iran, cancel flights amid increased risk of military escalation. In Palestine, coordinated pro-Palestinian protests snarl traffic across United States cities. CHP, California Highway Patrol, finally clears pro-Palestinian protests from I-880 in Oakland. All lanes are now reopened. That's of yesterday. Multiple pro-Palestinian protesters were arrested for blocking traffic in Chicago at the O'Hare Airport. Miami police arrest seven pro-Palestinian protesters who they say were blocking traffic. Israel delays Rafa offensive plans amid heated debate over response to Iranian attack. Israel's military chief says that Israel will respond to Iran's weakened missile attack immediately. Jordanians' jets shoot down dozens of Iranian drones flying towards Israel. In the Red Sea, cholera is spreading in the Houthi-controlled parts of of Yemen. In Asia, a stabbing of Bishop uh, Bishop Mar Amari Emmanuel in uh, Sydney, Australia, during a live stream service, was considered an act of terror by an Islamicist. China's GDP rose 5.3 percent in the first quarter, but it didn't mean, uh, but it doesn't mean that the economic pain is over yet. South Korea's foreign ministry summons Japan diplomats over disputed islands. Philippines' Marcos has no plans to grant the United States access to more bases. And rebels raise flag at a seized Myanmar base, commander confident of of, uh, retaining control of the base. Guyana announces intent to purchase French-designed oceanic patrol vessel. And the United States is going to reimpose sanctions on Venezuela due to lack of progress on free and fair elections. Also in the Congo, there is now a new and I guess more terrifying monkeypox that is even more deadly and even more virulent that is being spread throughout the area. Uh, It is already claimed, I think, 108 lives. Illegal immigrants have swarmed the New York City uh, City Hall to demand more aid and work permits. Also, because they're being forced out of the luxury hotels that they're staying in, and they're having to go to NGO camps. A suspected New York City subway slasher killer has been arrested for stabbing a one-year-old boy in Philadelphia after skipping a court date. And the news keeps getting worse. A trans vampire has been convicted of sexually assaulting a disabled girl and suspected of of murdering a disabled man. We can't keep doing this, America. We can't keep doing this. Just wait for the Black Awakening. We're going to wish for these days to come back. Anti-Israel activists is now slapped with 18 felonies for threatening to murder city council members. This happened in Bakersfield, California. A anti-Israeli activist in California sobbed in court on Friday after she was slapped with 18 felony counts for allegedly threatening to murder members of the Bakersfield City Council. Mess around and you're going to find out, lady. All right, so let's move on to the new FISA, which is probably one of the most disturbing things that we're about to talk about. So Edward Snowden tweeted out that the NSA is just days from taking over the internet and it's not on the front page of any newspaper because no one has noticed it yet. So Elizabeth Gotin uh, has a huge long uh, tweet about this and it is worth everything that I'm about to read for you guys to understand just how dangerous of the times that we're living in. (laughs) 
GOP betrays America. The United States House has voted to renew FISA warrantless spying. That's what we're talking about. All right. So this is from Zwilgen blog. Mark Zwillinger. Uh, pretty good blog, actually. House Intelligence Committee FISA reform bill would greatly expand the class of businesses and other entities that are required to assist in FISA 702 surveillance. So what that means that what this bill would do is that the NSA would force any business, any business to literally spy on you and report to the NSA any activity that you've done with them. Any activity. Here comes Big Brother. All right, Elizabeth Gotin says, please read the thread below. We have just days to convince the Senate not to pass a terrifying law at Ron Wyden that will force United States businesses to serve as NSA spies. Call your senator now. Using this call tool, click below, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you think the senators will even do anything about it. All right, here we go. Wait till you hear this. I should have been a firefighter. Never had to worry about this crap. All right, buried in the Section 702 reauthorization bill. Uh, the RISA, passed by the House on Friday, is the biggest expansion of domestic surveillance since the Patriot Act. Senator Wyden calls this power terrifying, and he's right. She goes on to say, I'll explain how this new power works. Under current law, the government can compel electronic communication service providers that have direct access to communications to assist the NSA in conducting Section 702 surveillance. In practice, that means that companies like Verizon and Google must turn over the communications of the targets of the Section 702 surveillance. The targets must be foreigners overseas, although the communications can and do include communications with Americans. Through a seemingly innocuous change to the definition of electronic communication surveillance provider, an amendment offered by the House Intelligence Committee leaders and passed by the House vastly expands the, the universe of entities that can be compelled to assist the NSA. If the bill becomes law, any company or individual that provides any service, any service whatsoever may be forced to assist the NSA surveillance as long as they have access to equipment on which communications are transmitted or stored, such as routers, servers, or cell towers. That sweeps in an enormous range of United States businesses that provide Wi-Fi to their customers and therefore access to equipment on which communications transit. Barbershops, laundromats, fitness centers, hardware stores, dentist's office, the list goes on and on. Anywhere you've walked into a place and it says sign into our Wi-Fi. It also includes commercial landlords that rent out the office space where tens of millions of Americans go to work every day. Offices of journalists, lawyers, nonprofits, financial advisors, healthcare providers, and more. When the amendment was first unveiled, one of the FISA court amici took the highly unusual step of sounding a public alarm. The civil liberties advocates noted that the provisions would encompass hotels, libraries, and even coffee shops. So they can also use techniques or devices, presumably provided by the NSA, to copy and turn over entire communications streams 
and or reposito uh, repositories of stored communications, which would inevitably include vast quantities of wholly domestic communications. The NSA having wholesale access to domestic communications on an unprecedented scale would then be on the honor system to pull out and retain only the communications of approved foreign targets. Let that sink in for a second. Who are approved targets? The House security members, leaders, deny that the administration has any intent to use the provision so broadly. Supposedly, there is a single type of service provider that the government wants to rope in, but they did not want anyone to know what that provider was. The amendment even extends to service providers who come into our homes, house cleaners, plumbers, people performing repairs, and IT services providers have access to laptops like your laptop and routers inside of our homes and could be forced to serve as surrogate spies. None of these people or businesses would be allowed to tell anyone about the assistance that they were compelled to provide. They would be under a gag order and they would face heavy penalties if they failed to comply with it. That's not even the worst part. Unlike Google and Verizon, most of these businesses and, and individuals lack the ability to isolate and turn over a target's communications. So they would be required to give the NSA access to the equipment itself. So they hid the real power by writing the amendment as broadly and as vaguely as possible, as the government always has and always will. But no worries, Americans. The administration isn't actually going to use all the power. It just persuaded the House to give it. She goes on to say that I cannot overstate how mind-blowingly irresponsible this is. I don't think any administration should be trusted with an Aurelian power like this. But even if this administration doesn't plan to make full use of it, go ahead and fill in the blank as to who else could. There are certain powers a government should not have in a democracy. Uh, we're a republic, ma'am, but whatever. The ability to force ordinary businesses and individuals to serve as a surrogate spy is one of them. Even if the targets are supposed to be foreigners, a power this sweeping will be abused. By the way, when a privacy advocate tried to get um, one of the other members of the House to engage on this issue, here is the thoughtful and conscientious reply given by the ranking member of the House Security um, a man who clearly cares deeply about civil liberties, Jim Himes. He said, you do that, but life is really too short to engage with people who need to use bombastic absurdities like Stasi-like. Yes, I know exactly what is in there. Some of it is classified. So, and this guy is also very pro-Ukraine. Uh, when you have members of the House Security Committee, Intelligence Committee, who does not care that you call them Stasi-like when they are literally asking for the power to prod into your life through anyone who comes in contact with you. The hubris of these people. The Senate must stop this train before it is too late. The Senate is scheduled to vote on the House passed bill this week. If there's an opportunity to remove this provision, senators should remove it. If not, they should vote against the bill. That's Elizabeth Goating. So, we will soon be seeing one of the most broad sweeping powers that the government has ever given itself. 
all this is being done for a reason. All this is because you have the infrastructure of the Antichrist that is coming online. And just like how the Chinese have access to anything that involves the internet in China, and they literally monitor anything that you say, the United States wants it too. What does that tell you? What should that tell you for the future of the United States and where we're going? Little update for Ukraine. Not that this is making me feel any better, but as of April 12th, soldiers of the French Foreign Legion have arrived in the DPR in the contested area of Ukraine. On April 15th, Russia hit the French military and Slavyanks. Mercenaries brought Caesar howitzers to shell Zaporizhia. French mercenaries were taken to ba uh, Pavlograd after the Russian armed forces struck their area underground. So, France did what they said they were going to do. They inserted their troops into Ukraine. Now, the Foreign Legion is technically a mercenary group, technically, but it's led by active duty French officers. So we're in this really weird state where we don't know if this is something that NATO can say that their forces are being fired upon by Russia and it's an act of war. And now they can call in all of uh, the NATO forces to come into Ukraine. So this was just yesterday. We haven't heard nothing yet. Uh, some news from what's going on with the missile strike that happened in Israel with Iran. Iranian media are actively circulating a fragment of a recording of the arrival of one of Iran's warheads at a target in Israel, which shows the flying object performing a maneuver and then flying in a straight line to the target. It can be seen that the maneuver is performed in the atmosphere at high speed and therefore with high overloads and the object is not destroyed. At least Iranian high-speed maneuvering warheads, now not only local propaganda is being used, but apparently a real and proven weapon has been used. Reaching the target with a powerful missile to system that is able to, I don't know, I guess outmaneuver uh, the, uh, the Iron Dome. So what the missile did was as it was flying down, it then shot upwards and then arced right back down. And this is the same area where they had seven multiple missile strikes at once. So anyways, that's the news. Train, prepare, and pray. That's what I'm going to leave you with. Train, prepare, and pray. Be careful whose company you are in. I would tell you earnestly to seek the Lord, to get right with him. Stop playing games with God. Now is the time to repent if you have not. If a sinner like me is shown mercy and so can you call upon the name of jesus and be saved men stand up for your families start leading the women in prayer if you're not praying with your family every day if you're not reading your bible with them every day you're in error that's not me that's the lord saying that you're in error War is coming to the United States. Poverty is coming to the United States. 
grid down is coming to the United States. I don't know if Donald Trump is going to be the last president, and I don't know if the the guy who doesn't even know his own freaking name, uh, Brick, if uh, if Biden is going to be our last president. At this rate, it doesn't matter. What is promised is wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, kingdoms riding, rising up against kingdoms, ethnicities rising up against ethnicities. There will be violence in a man's own home from his family. There will be false prophets and false teachers, people claiming to be Christ. Wickedness will abound. The love of many will wax cold. And if you are not right with God, you will be caught off guard. Be prepared. Thanks very much for listening. If you like what we do and uh, you want to support us, we have a Patreon. We have other ways to support us. Uh, please check out our affiliates and our sponsors. Uh, the Patriot Trainer, Dan Lyons. Has a great program if you're wanting to get into shape. Um, it's a pretty good program where you get to learn about dieting, basic working out, foods to avoid, to be able to drop weight, to get healthy. It's not a you know one of these little magical uh, pills that promises to give you a six pack or some crap like that. It's actual hard science, and it's one of those things as adults. Once you start to learn what to eat, what not to eat, you will greatly benefit your life and put years back on your life too. I mean, I'm telling you, if there was ever a time to get in shape, if there was ever a time to try and get off of pills, to get off of the alcohol, to get off of all the stuff that you are dependent upon when America is cut off from the world and you can't get your medicine no more, you can't get your dope mo no more, you can't get your alcohol no more, this country is going to lose its mind for about the first month to two months. America will be the most dangerous place in the world. I hope you're ready. I hope you are close with the Lord. See you next time. Take it easy. <laughs>